Lays out the rise of Andy Griffith's incredible career and the role Roanoke Island played in it. Andy first arrived in Roanoke Island along the North Carolina coast in the late 1940s as he was finishing up school at UNC Chapel Hill. In tonight's Buckley Report, Bob explains once he found the island, he never truly left it. Hey y'all, how you doing? Thanks for coming. Folks are gathering at Sunrise Books in High Point. And one for Curtis. Not so much to meet the author. The wild-eyed, rail-thin, foothills boy steps out on the stage. But to hear the author talk about the man that we all feel as if we've met in a way. Andy Griffith, sweaty and scared, is making his first real try at comedy. The sausage and the ham. To much of the world. <laughs> They're going to make you grow. Andy Griffith is North Carolina. Lettuce and the crackers, that's going to give you heartburn. Ah! Then he's doing these TV movies with Johnny Cash. And in his new book about Andy, author John Rayley focuses on the years that launched Andy to stardom. What happened to him on that sliver of sand during his Lost Colony summers, culminating in that night, was as magic as lightning over the sound, a cosmic kiss. It was a decade before the Andy Griffith Show hit the airways, and Andy was finding his performance footing on Roanoke Island. When he got to that island, that took his transformation to the galaxies. Performing in The Lost Colony. It was the beauty of the place, but he would say even more important, it was the welcoming nature, the non-judgmental nature, the artistic freedom of being with this group of um, The Lost Colony cast and crew. From there, Andy began doing comedic monologues. It's become conventional wisdom to say that Andy's breakthrough was what it was, was football, but that ain't right. Uh, his real breakthrough was at Nags Head in 1952, and my parents were in that crowd, so I was hardwired for this. Particularly one in which he gives a country boy's take on Shakespeare's Hamlet. He carefully reels them in, honing his timing, waving his long arms around to make points, reveling in his comedic power. He lays the hook in hard. This Hamlet, it's a pretty good show, and the moral of it is, if you was to ever kill a fella and marry his wife, I'd be right careful not to tell my stepson. <laughs> it all led, of course, to the iconic role as Sheriff Andy Taylor. He clearly recognized that he'd been stereotyped, and Ron Howard told me that. He worked in other roles. In fact, people under 40 may know him better as the lawyer Matlock. But whenever he wasn't in Hollywood working, he was in Manio on Roanoke Island, a place John Rayleigh says was more than just a home for him. Roanoke Island is, is Andy's rosebud, as in Citizen Kane. Um, that place defined him, and I feel like with this book, I've helped define a complex character. A character still claimed by the town in which he grew up. But Rayleigh says that if you could ask Andy, you might be surprised by where he truly felt at home. He only went back as an adult twice to Mount Airy. Um, he lived and died on that island. And as he once said, if, if Mayberry is anywhere, it's Manio. Bob Buckley, Fox 8 News. Wow, and Andy died on Roanoke Island. It'll be 10 years ago in July, and he's buried there. And you can get John Raley's book, Andy Griffith's Manio, at most bookstores. And